Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Steph and today is the last day of May, not May. Today is the last day of June so you know that it's time for a monthly reading wrap up of every book I read this month. I'm not sure how many books I read this month. I think I read 10 or 11. I'm gonna go through every book I read this month, explain all the books, my thoughts and opinions about them. I actually read so many good books this month. So the first book I read this month was Culty by Mariana Zapata. I loved this book. I gave it a four and a half out of five stars which is like so good for my reading scale. It was Enemies to Lovers, Slow Burn, classic Mariana Zapata. I love The Wall of Winnipeg and everyone was recommending this book after I read that, so I picked it up. It was a soccer sports romance between the coach and one of the players, except the player is like in her 20s, she's older. And the coach, his name is Colty, she actually idolized him her entire life. She had posters of him in her room. She was like his biggest fan, she wrote him fan mail. She basically loved him growing up. He was like the reason she loved soccer so much and now he's her coach. She does not like him, he's disrespectful respectful he's rude and quiet and he was mean to her dad so she just does not like him right off the bat and she stands up to him when no one else will because everyone else kind of scared of him and they kind of become friends and start hanging out and then it's kind of the enemies to friends to lovers if you like the wall of winnipeg and from luke off with love then you will love culty it was so good and i love the story and the build up and when you finally get to the end oh, it's just amazing <laughs> the next book i read was love in other words by christina lauren and this was a five star read for me i wish I read it earlier so I could have included it in my five star reads video. I love this book so so much. I was not expecting to love it that much. I thought it was just me a cute little rom-com. Oh my god it was so good. I read it in one sitting five hours straight sat there and read the whole thing. It was incredible. Let me explain it. This book is told in past and present perspective and it was done so so well. This is like I loved it so much. So basically Macy when she was young her mom passed away but she left like a whole list of things for Macy's dad for like advice to give Macy as she grew up and like to refer back to this list anytime she needed her mom's advice. And one of the things was to make sure that they had a place they could go when she needed like an escape. So they bought a lake house. They would go there every weekend and every weekend she would hang out with this little boy she met there and his name was Elliot. They were in elementary school when they met. They kind of just understood each other and they became like instant best friends. So in the past chapters, you're watching them as kids be best friends and slowly form a relationship and then the next chapter in the present is them no longer together, no longer friends, no longer talking, but she runs into him and he's instantly drawn to her and tells her straight off the bat, like, I don't know why you cut me off all those years ago, but please, can we talk? Can we be friends again? She's hesitant. The present perspective is them re-falling in love, getting a second chance romance. I was so invested in the past and the present perspectives that I couldn't stop reading. I would get to the end of the past chapter and be like, oh, I need to read the present. And then I get to the end of the present chapter and be like, I need to read the past. That I just read it in all one sitting. The build up to what happened and why they fell apart. Oh my god, was not expecting it. I just expected it to be a cute, wholesome read, and it was, but it was also so much more. If you loved Interference by Harlow Cole and The People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, if you put those books together, that is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. Okay, then I actually read Fearless Like Us from the Like Us series. I included this in my last monthly reading wrap up because I started reading it at the end of May, and then I actually stopped reading it because I didn't like it, and I just decided I was gonna wait for my friend to read it, so I stopped like a few chapters in even though I included it at the end of my last wrap up I'm including it again because I actually did read it this month I didn't like it it's from the like us series which is one of my favorite series of all time but the eighth and ninth book I just didn't like the couple didn't like the storyline didn't like the book so that I kind of just read to get it over with and I'm not even gonna get into it because it's part of the series hard to explain but yeah I read the fearless like us by Kristen Beckerichi then I read Trist Six Venom by Penelope Douglas, which is a new release, sapphic romance. I love Penelope Douglas. Like I love Bully, I love Punk 57, I love Birthday Girl, I love like so many of her books. And this was another high school bully romance. It's this girl, Clay and Olivia, and they are so mean to each other, especially Clay towards Olivia is just ruthless. And Olivia has five older brothers. I need a book about all the brothers, by the way, especially Macon. Oh my God, I need a book about them. Please Penelope Douglas, make it a series. Anyway, she has five older brothers, their parents passed away and Clay will absolutely just tear her apart, bully her. All of her friends bully her at school. Olivia's kind of a tough girl though, like she takes it and gives it right back and she isn't sensitive and doesn't just go cry after Clay's mean to her. But it's obvious that the reason
reason Clay's mean to her is because she's attracted to her, but she doesn't want to accept the fact that she's attracted to girls. And there's so much angst and tension and buildup. And it, it got kind of frustrating because of how much they would fight and then make up and fight and then make up, but it obviously makes her an entertaining story. I feel like no authors, like my favorite authors, like my main authors that I read every book they write, never write sapphic romance. So I've never really read one until this. And I was like, why? Like no authors really write them. So you guys could get on that because I really enjoyed it. Right after that, I read Confess by Colleen Hoover. Colleen Hoover is my favorite author of all time. And there are very few books by her that I haven't read. I think there's like four. Confess was one of them. I don't know how and why I didn't read it sooner because it just became one of my favorites of all time too. If you love November 9th or any Colleen Hoover book, you would love Confess. The boy in Confess reminded me so much of Ben from November 9th, but anyway. So Confess is about this girl Auburn and you see right from the prologue that her first boyfriend, like the boy she thought she was gonna marry and be with forever, actually passes away. If that was when she was a teenager and then the first chapter starts when she's way older, but still she's like thinking about her ex-boyfriend that passed away and it was so sad. She is looking for a Job. don't know why but she just moved to Texas and you're trying to figure out why because like she makes it seem like there's a big reason behind it but you don't know why she's walking down the street she sees a like help wanted sign outside of this art studio and the door opens and there stands Owen and he's like will you work for me I have an art show tonight and I just fired my employee who's my ex-girlfriend we just broke up and I need someone to help me so she's like yes I'll help you I need a job whatever they start talking he's showing her his art which was so cool I love the art aspect of this book he basically would leave a box at his door, like a mailbox, and people would write down a confession, like something really deep that you would never tell anyone anonymously, and put it in this box, and he would go through them and paint the confessions, how he would interpret them, so, and put them up in his art gallery, and people would buy them, or anonymously buy them, and Auburn was so intrigued by this, she thought it was so cool, and like, they had like an instant connection, like you could feel it when he was showing her around the studio, and she was appreciating the art, and then you get an Owen's perspective, and in his head, he's like, I can't let her find out that I know her, and you're like, what? he knows her and he is saying like i can't let her find out like i'll ruin everything if she knows and then immediately i'm intrigued classic colleen hoover there's drama with his family drama with her family a lot of drama with her family owen is very selfless and i really really love his character i love him so much it makes my heart hurt and auburn deserves the whole world i feel so bad for her like she really does go through it and the way that they ended up being connected I just really, really could not recommend this book enough. Please read Confess by Colleen Hoover. Then I got into a series. So I read a few standalones and I decided it was time. I made a decision at the beginning of the summer that this was gonna be the summer of reading series because with this channel, I feel like I constantly need to be reading standalones so I have new stuff to recommend. But I love the series so much. It's like my favorite part of reading is getting so invested in a good long book series. So I said this summer, I'm just gonna read series. So I started the Fallen Men series by Gianna Darling. I read Lessons of Corruption, Welcome the dark side and good gone bad the first three books they're not my absolute face all three of the ones i've read so far insta love forbidden age gap which is I don't know how I feel about it. I wasn't like immediately drawn to read the next one. I decided to start reading the Born and Blood Mafia Chronicles by Cor Riley because it's been on my TBR for like two years. I finally caved. I've read Sweet Temptation by Cor Riley, which is like a spinoff of this series. It's just a standalone novel and I liked it. So I knew I would like this series. <laughs> it's so good. I've read Bound by Honor, Luca Vitiello. I don't know how to say his last name and Bound by Duty. So I've read the first like three books. One of them is technically a 0.5, but it was longer than the first book. So I consider it a part of the series. So I read those three. If you like mafia romance, I'm sure you've already read this series. If you're new to mafia romance, I feel like this is a good introduction. But this is definitely a series where I had to just take a step back, turn my feminism off, and just let myself experience the book and not critique it that much because it's obviously mafia romance. The men are in charge. There's arranged marriage. There's a lot of like sexism. Like the girls don't really have a say in what they do. The guys are in charge. The dads kind of just arrange marriage their daughters. It's like a form of payment to save themselves and the girls are kind of just like used as literal like property it's so annoying but, like reading it actually infuriates me and like the guys are like oh i have the right to claim my wife like do whatever i want with her but then the main guy always ends up like having that mentality meeting this girl and having a soft spot for like the one girl reading the book in his perspective too i really saw like how much he wasn't like what i thought he's actually like in love with her but it was just hard to read at first like it takes a little bit to get used to and get into because the girls are not treated right 
night by everyone except other girls and their one guy. <laughs> so it's really frustrating to read, but I love the mafia aspect of the protective super dominant guy. And it is so entertaining to read. There's so much action and scenes where the guy has to save her and she has to save him and there's drama. And I really, really am enjoying it. And there's so many books in the series. I know it's like two combined series. So I'm gonna have plenty of mafia romances to read this whole summer. But yeah, I just read those first three books and I'm actually gonna start the fourth one tonight. So that is actually everything I read this month. This video is probably gonna be a lot shorter than my other reading wrap ups just because I read series. So I don't have to explain each individual book in the series. I've read so, so many good books this month. It was actually such a great reading month in terms of how good the books were. But yeah, that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I read this month. If you wanna follow me on my other social media, they're all linked down below as always, as well as my Amazon wishlist if you wanna send me a book. And I'll see you in my next video very, very soon. Bye.